dear learners uh, today we are here to uh, uh, know something about the reptiles of northeast india we'll give emphasis to northeast india and we will also know what are the different species of reptiles are found here in northeast india as you know uh, reptiles and amphibians are grouped together into a subject called herpetology so uh, the subject we deal with the study of reptiles and amphibians are called as herpetology so i am a herpetologist i am doing with herpetology so here in northeast india as you know the diversity of all the animal life plants and animals both are astonishing it's very very diverse as you know from this picture this is the different global biodiversity hotspot of the world and marked in red so in uh, india has two biodiversity hotspot and both these two one is western ghat and one is northeast india so as you know this northeast india falls into two biodiversity hotspot zone one is the himalayan hotspot region and one is the indo burman hotspot region of the world so uh, we might ask a, a question that why this diversity is so much prominent in northeast india that is just because of the you know northeast india's geographical position borders border shared with china Myanmar and uh, Bhutan all these international boundaries plus the altitudinal diversity what we met the physiography of the region is so that it support lot of different types of habitats so from this picture we can see that the number 1 2 and 3 these are the different geographic zones of northeast india so this uh, number 1 zone is the himalayan range number 2 as you see the plain area is the assam plain and the number 3 is the continuous mountain chains which are known as northeastern mountains so these northeastern mountains are low to mid elevation hills and these are also low to very high snow peak mountains and this is alluvial assam plain deposition of the brahmaputra river so this picture probably tell us the single picture tell us the altitudinal variation in northeast india as you see from this uh, this is the river valley and then it starts the tropical evergreen forest which is the most important habitat for uh, reptiles and then subtropical to temperate vegetation occurs at 1000 to 2000 meter elevation and then we have the snow clad free so uh, as you know the reptiles they are not uh, much pronounced in this zone so most of the reptiles and amphibians are concentrated in the tropical and the subtropical zone of northeast india so going into the forest uh, uh, in northeast india we have this tropical evergreen forest the close up of the forest as we see this forest are very thick and impenetrable and uh, all the trees are having lot of epiphytes epiphytes so these are favorable most favorable habitat for reptiles and amphibia and this forest are also having lot of mountain streams with big boulders and rocks and with two lines of vegetation which are very favorable habitat for reptiles and amphibians and as we go higher we have this subtropical forest which are all the very cold climate and all the trees are bryophyte laden so uh, coming to the reptilian diversity what we have in northeast india so far in india um, uh, we have uh, something around 280 species of snakes but we have uh, uh, in northeast india we have 102 species so far recorded but the total reptilian diversity as you know reptiles consist of uh, very uh, crocodiles turtles lizards and snakes so we have one species of uh, uh, crocodile which is very much threatened nowadays the gharial the 21 species of turtles turtles fauna is the most rich uh, in northeast india out of 29 species in india 21 occur in uh, northeast 50 species of lizards and 102 species of snakes so far been recorded from northeast india so first starting with crocodile in india we have uh, this is called salt water crocodile crocodilus porosus this is uh, mugger crocodile freshwater crocodile and crocodile pelustris and then we have gharial the most long snout crocodile so these three different types of crocodile occur in india out of which in northeast india gharial once occurred in the brahmaputra and barak river system but now it appeared uh, it fast disappear it disappeared in the last uh, couple of decades so why gharial disappeared so characteristic is that they are the largest uh, freshwater crocodile and rank close with young saltwater and then a gharial can grow up to 181 kg which is quite big 
and males of them uh, grow up to 6 meter and um, something around 90, 20 feet in length males but females are little smaller so they grow up to you know 12 feet of length females then uh, hatchling uh, at the time of they come out from the egg they are of uh, 32 to 37 centimeter long so Garial is the most uh, sexually dimorphic, means uh, the uh, male and female is very easily can be distinguished among all the lab reptiles as males of the garial have a big ghara like structure on their snout, knob like structure, however the female don't have that. So we can easily identify the male and female garial. So from this ghara like uh, appendage the name garial came into being. So, uh, nesting, you know, uh, Garial has a very interesting nesting habit where uh, females, they dig the nest in a sandy beach or a sandbar of the river uh, valleys and they, this is the whole nest of the Garial. So, the hole is something around 50 centimeter deep and then after they, uh, they lay something around 40 to 80 eggs uh, per clutch and uh, these uh, gharial's eggs are supposed to be one of the largest among all the crocodilian eggs so these are the gharial eggs you can see so nesting uh, during uh, uh, this uh, monsoon season so the nesting starts and this is the sand beach where gharial used to nest and in the night time the females climb the sand bar so you can see the marks on the sand they climb on the top and they uh, uh, dig the um, uh, sand and deposit their eggs. So this is uh, the time where nesting begins and at that time you can see a lot of uh, all the sand bar, uh, bar banks and bars are marked with the garial belly marking. So that uh, in initiate the process of nesting. So then coming to the next group of uh, reptile, we have uh, turtle and tortoise. As you know, we have the richest diversity of freshwater turtles. So turtles and tortoise, uh, we basically divide into tortoise and turtle. What is the difference between them? This is one of the species of tortoise, you can say. This is elongated tortoise and found in the shal forest area, western Assam part. And uh, why they are called tortoise? Because they have an elephantine limb. Their limbs are like elephants and they have a hard shell on their body and they are largely terrestrial. They rarely go into the water. So this is another lar uh, largest species of tortoise found in northeast India in uh, Mizoram, Kachar and uh, of the sou sou southern Brahmaputra hill districts. This is Manoria emis, Asian giant tortoise. So this is one of the most en endangered tortoise nowadays. So you can see the legs, it's like more like elephants and they are very much terrestrial. Coming to the turtles, uh, turtles can be divided into hard shell and soft shell turtles. So this is the species called hard shell turtle and they are in Assamese we call them Durakaso. This is very small in size and in the river they they bask like this they on the fallen logs they climb and they bask on the morning sun. So these are the hard shell turtles but why they are called turtle because they are very much aquatic and their limbs are like flippers to swim in the water. Then we have soft shell turtles. In Assamese they are called Borkaso. So the soft shell turtle is completely aquatic, they grow really large, 80 kgs of uh, weight they can grow and the, you can see complete uh, webbed feet for, come, uh, uh, for uh, swimming and that shows that they have a, a very strong aquatic mode of life and their, uh, their um, carapace is also uh, soft, so they are called soft shell turtles. Coming, uh, so these are the two groups of large growing reptiles, but we have a lot of small varieties which actually contribute to the diversity. So this is one of the most common lizard species we call uh, Tespia. So it's because uh, they, grow, they, they grow the red coloration on their neck during the mating season to attract the female. So, but the uh, yeah, other way we uh, we mistake that it is it, uh, it it sucks the blood from the human, which is completely false. This is just a coloration to attract their mate. So these are the very common lizards always found in our gardens and also cities and also forest areas. But there are some lizards which we don't see much, and they they live on the high on the hills. So this is one of the green species of lizard, and it's very common in higher elevation in the subtropical forest called uh, green calotes.
and then this is the blue uh, lizard this is also a mountain species a very nice called mustache calotis so they they have a nice mustache like coloration and this is also a breeding coloration only male have this color and then we have another agamid called fan throated lizard they have a doe lip this uh, this structure is called doe lip so they they whenever they see any female the males of the uh, group they sh uh, they take out the doe lip and then they show it so based on the, the size of the doe lip they are selected for mating and then another interesting uh, lizard is the draco or flying lizard we say but they have a big uh, petagium like uh, petagium or uh, like wing like structure called petagium and they they can not actually fly they they actually glide from the higher canopy to lower canopy when they jump they can glide to a distance and that's why they are called uh, flying lizard it's also available in northeast india this is the species which we got from uh, uh, near gohati city also coming to the most abundant and most popular lizard is the house gecko uh, uh, we call it jethi so this uh, house gecko we often we find in the human structure in our buildings and this is the most uh, the biggest house gecko uh, giant gecko we have so these geckos have a very special characteristic is that their legs so you can see they have a different uh, uh, this uh, structures so by which this is the adhesive disc they can uh, we can say with this they uh, they can uh, um, create a air air pressure and then uh, suction with the help of air suction pressure they can cling on the walls so this is the mechanism with their feet and that's why they are very specialized and they are the reptiles with the voice so we always hear the tick tick sound uh, in the evening time from the geckos so the next group of uh, lizards are the skinks and varanus skinks as we uh, know we call them um, monicora monicora and they are also the lizard um, uh, lizard but a uh, little bit different because other lizards like like geckos also they break the tail and the skinks they are very very uh, common in the forest floor they inhabit the forest floor particularly the leaf litter and also some of the species found in the towns also but this is one of the long tail lizard uh, long tail lizard and uh, this is a forest species particularly uh, it inhabit the tropical evergreen forest areas of northeast india so whenever somebody if somebody catch them by their tail they can break their tail so this is one of the mechanism but as we grow uh, more into the uh, uh, skinks we find that uh, uh, slowly slowly they are there is a disappearance of their limbs we can see the limbs body is more like they are becoming like snakes and then legs are becoming shorter so we can say that evolutionarily they are going towards something very special so and coming to the varanus uh, we have three species of varanus in northeast india the common bengal monitor lizard and then this is the yellow monitor lizard which is the rarest and then another uh, monitor lizard is called water monitor water monitor lizard is the world's second largest living lizard the first uh, living lizard uh, largest living lizard as you know is the komodo dragon of komodo island but this uh, water monitor lizard is the second largest growing species so uh, can we identify this animal whether it is a snake or a lizard yeah uh, the question may be uh, asked in this way and then answer may be so many some uh, uh, some say some will say that this is a snake and some other will say that this is a lizard but we can easily identify that this is a actually a legless lizard so as we see the lizard which has completely lost its limb but we can identify because Uh, the lizard has a eyelid but snake don't have a eyelid so by this way we can identify this is end of one chapter